Welcome to the Arizona Clinical Informatics Educational Series on Cerner. Lesson 2, Power Chart Basic Overview, Part 4. Welcome back. As we continue lesson number two, we are now going into the final series of Part 4. We are moving to the next end page for review, and that is patient information. This page contains four tabs, patient demographics, visit list, PPR summary, and encounter location history. The first default tab is patient demographics, and this shows you demographics, identifiers, phone numbers, and addresses of the patient. The visit list tab shows you on default the present admin with all current information on the patient, length of stay, room and bed, health plan, providers, and etc. If the patient has more than one visit, the user can select another visit and view the patient data from this screen without having to perform another patient search. Some things of caution here. If you move to another visit, you can potentially start charting in a past account and this will not transfer over to the present account. The PPR summary allows you to see the established visit relationships with the patient. You remember when we selected a relationship of registered nurse when we first accessed this patient? This is where that information is seen. In this instance, Orange RN Shauna is our established relationship on this patient. Lifetime relationships are typically primary care physicians. The Encounter Location History tab allows you to track the movement of this patient as they are transferred throughout the facility. The Documentation End page allows the user to review a list of documentations that have been entered in on a patient. It defaults to all documentation. In this default, you will see nursing, respiratory, physical therapy, physician, and et cetera documentation appear. Notice there is our asthma education showing up that we documented on earlier. Select the down arrow next to display. You will get a drop down of all the available filters for the documentation. The documents end page is similar to the documentation end page, but it utilizes a folder file format of separating documentation. Most users find this method easier to find items of documentation before review over the documentation end page. To open a folder, let's double click on the history and physical reports folder. This opens up the folder and we now see subfolders with a plus mark in front of them. Select the plus to open the subfolder. Once the folder is opened, you see the document to view. In this case, it has the date of documentation and the name of the documentation. Double click on the file to open. You will now see the documentation in the view pane to the right of the folders. Here's an example of the radiology and subfolders opened up to the two view chest x-ray report. The folders always default to a by type sort. Below the folders, you can change this to view by many options. For example, the by date sorter has been selected and you can see the folders change from names of the documents to the date of the documents when they were entered. This is an example of how the sort by selection of performed by looks like. This is an example of the sort by selection of by encounter and what it looks like. Our next page is Form Browser. This end page is the storehouse for any documentation that was entered by using a power form. Remember the ad hoc folder? All documentation done through the ad hoc folder is through a power form. Here's our asthma education again. We can double click on it to review the data that was entered. After double clicking, the view screen of the documentation pops up. After reviewing to close, you will need to select the red X in the upper right hand corner. If you needed a document again on this power form, right click on the document and select modify. The power form opens back up and it allows you now to perform modifications as needed. Let's make some changes to our documentation. Here we will select the education topic of methods and timing of rescue actions. We can add yet another education topic and a refusal if that is the case. When completed, we will select the green check mark to finalize our documentation. Notice the information on the asthma education now says modified. 
If I had documented an error on a power form, this is where we can remove the documentation. Right click on the document charted in error and select unchart. Enter to comment on why you are uncharting and then select the check mark. Notice your documentation in form browser now has a line through it and it now says the status of in error. Our next end page is reference. In this end page, you have three tabs, drug reference, education leaflet, and reference. Search for what you're looking for. Your drug reference for Coreg appears. You have the ability to print this. Click on the education leaflet and type in Coreg. Here we get the English version of the drug Coreg that we can print and educate the patient with should the patient have this as a new medication or needs further education on the medication itself that they are already taking. Selecting the print button brings up the available printers for the computer you are on. I can select the Spanish radio button if I needed this information in Spanish. If there was any reference information on Coreg, it would be available under the reference tab. Some medications have black box warnings and this information would appear here. The next end page is immunizations. This particular page is not widely in use as state and governmental agencies aren't sharing all their data to facilities just yet. In future updates, past immunizations and future immunization schedules would appear on this page. For demo purposes, let's select the paper icon button in the lower left hand of the screen. Selecting this pulls up a pop-up box on items to discuss with the patient on who we can notify when immunizations are due or overdue. Complete the permissions of notification. A new pop-up screen appears, allowing for us to begin the process of adding the immunization. Select the Add to Selections button. This will pull up a list of all vaccines available to choose from. For our demonstration, we have selected and highlighted Hepatitis B vaccine. Select the Add button. We now begin filling in all the required fields highlighted in yellow, beginning with our performed date. When completed with all required fields, we will select the chart button. We can now see that hepatitis B vaccine has been added to the previous immunization section. Of note, certain immunizations administered via the EMAR will auto-populate to this section. One of these includes the influenza vaccine. The growth chart in page is utilized for pediatric patients. The task list in page is a method of reviewing tasks that are assigned or completed on patients. You are defaulted to the scheduled patient tab, and there are three other tabs, all PRN tasks, all continuous tasks, and nurse collect. Most users will document tasks via the Cure Compass. For more information on Cure Compass, please refer to lesson number three. The all PRN task shows PRN tasks that are available as needed to document on. The Nurse Collect tab shows lab specimens that are due to collect. Though Care Compass is recommended to document your task on, you can double click on a task in the task list and it will allow you to document from there. This will open up an activity view in INO INET to complete the documentation. More detailed information on documenting a task is covered in Lesson 3 and Lesson 7. The pending diagnostic test in page is an easy and quick way to track the progress on where a pending lab test is in the collection and resulting process. The infusion billing in page is reserved for patients that were in the ED or are or were in an observation status at the hospital. It is used to document the completion of IV infusion times and volumes. This allows infusion charges to generate. In the train domain, this will not be able to be demonstrated. The next end page is the discharge summary end page. This page is very similar to the inpatient Congratulations, you have made it to the end of lesson two, Power Chart Basic Overview. 
which is part of the Arizona Clinical Informatics Educational Series on Cerner. Lesson three is next, and it is on Cure Compass.